Sir, the Comptroller and Auditor General of India has pulled up the Ministry of External Affairs for revenue losses and improper financial management in a recently released audit report. So my question is, does the Ministry have any planned compensation mechanism in order to recover the revenue losses of Rs. 58.23 crores occurred because of misapplication of fees in the OCI card scheme? Honorable Minister. Um, sir, uh, I would like to inform the Honorable Member through you, sir. The Ministry of External Affairs extends a number of consular services, or passports, visas, <coughs> consular services, attestations, OCI, PIO. Each of this is a charge service. Now, because these are rendered outside the country, there are rate of exchange issues which come up. Now, these are all services which came up at different points of time. So, typically they were handled, the instructions in each case were sent uh, individually. Now, in 2017, uh, instructions were sent regarding, uh, because whenever there is devaluation or revaluation, there's a refixation of the rate of exchange. In 2017, instructions were sent regarding refixing of the rate of exchange. Now, the CAG uh, paragraph, sir, and I want to say here that uh, uh, my own experience of audit and of CAG, I believe they are a very essential part of good governance. Uh, they uh, help us to uh, look at uh, uh, imperfections in our process. So CAG brought to attention two sets of issues. One related to UK. Now, in the case of UK, there should have been, uh, according to the CAG report, a 23% increase uh, in the fees which were charged. But our mission in UK took the view at that point that this would have a very dampening effect on the tourism from UK to India, and therefore limited it to 10%. So they did it for what they considered to be policy reasons. 17 other missions and posts in Europe, uh, in their particular case, they were under the assumption that the instructions applied to visas and not to OCI. So they did not make the necessary changes. Now when this matter has come to attention, uh, we have actually, uh, uh, before the matter was actually taken up by CAG, sir, we had uh, issued instructions uh, in 2020 to uh, rectify the process. So what we have tried to do is to put systemic checks, because that is the nature of the CAG process. The CAG wants us to make corrections so that such a mistake will not happen again. So the, uh, we have instituted quarterly reporting, which is uh, monitored through the e-Samiksha process, so that the rate of exchange on uh, all services is monitored quarterly. Every month, the head of the consular wing is also required to report to the uh, head of mission or head of post. Uh, and there's a mandatory revision every April so that whatever happens, it is not slipped up uh, due to bureaucratic delay. And there's a unified rate of all services so that this kind of situation will not occur. Supplementary to Sir, there has been setting up of Indian cultural centers abroad. In Washington, D.C., at a cost of $5.75 million, in 2013, 2013, a center was taken up. And in Paris, in 2011, it was taken up, which is now encroached. Sir, in the answer, it has been given that these properties have faced certain challenges in preparing them for their intended use. Your question. So my question is, sir, what is the plan of action and why such a casual answer has been given? Uh, sir, in the case of the property in Washington, it was acquired in 2013. Now, in the case of the property in Paris, it was acquired in 2011. Now, typically, and they were acquired for the purpose of cultural centers. Now, typically, sir, when uh, properties are acquired, not built greenfield, uh, they need to be modified for use. And that is the uh, uh, information which I was trying to convey to the Honorable Member through my answer, that there was a modification required to make it ready for use. Now, in the case of uh, the Washington property, sir, 
what happened was after the acquisition of the property, a certain set of issues came up while the matter was being processed. Uh, there were waterproofing issues, there were asbestos concerns, there was conservation work which was recommended by the architect uh, in, in, uh, uh, we were looking at. And in all of this, we also faced a problem that the general financial rules of the government of India was at variance with American practice. For example, our rules require us to take earnest money deposit, to seek a performance guarantee uh, uh, bond, to seek retention money, and these are not American practices. So by the time we resolved this, uh, we actually uh, had two issues then which came up. One, the Americans made us an offer of uh, additional land in Washington, D.C. So then this raised a question whether we should go ahead with this project or whether we should be looking at the new land offer, which we got in 2019. The second issue was COVID, because, because of COVID, uh, everything was at standstill for two and a half years. So I would like to assure the member that we, since we have a property, we are giving instructions for its usage by the embassy so that a government asset uh, is not rendered infructuous. Now, regarding the property in Paris, sir, uh, we had, again, some very peculiarly French uh, uh, problems. Uh, one was the tendering practices in France are very different from us. Uh, we, they do not uh, allow a general contractor who has overall supervision. So they insisted that this, uh, the tender had to be split up into 15 packages, which were awarded to 10 different companies. Now, it was unfortunately, sir, a problem that one of the companies which was in charge of structures, partitions, ceiling, and facade went bankrupt. Now, in our country, uh, by our procedures, we could have awarded that work to another uh, contractor. Uh, in the French system, sir, till the liquidation was done, and the court of liquidation appointed another company to do that work, and that company then raised the price. Uh, we had to follow the French uh, practices. So, but I would like to assure the honorable member, sir, that this project is 95% done. There are challenges when we work abroad and we have to reconcile their practices with our rules. Uh, I think uh, we have tried to do our best under these circumstances. And I'm sure when the CAG paragraph is examined, uh, including by the PAC, uh, these will be issues which will be present. 